So the wife wanted a mantle, so obviously I used it as an excuse to build all this stuff. So like most projects, it starts off by breaking down some wood. Once I had a rough idea of what I was going to make, I decided to take masking tape and put it on the wall. Then when I got the proportions right on the wall, I cross-referenced it to what I was going to potentially buy to make sure I wasn't too far off. Then I drilled my pocket holes and sanded down my pieces. I started to assemble the shell. Then I used identical pieces and a spacer to make sure the shelf was in line. There are a ton of techniques to make cabinets, but using pocket holes works very well for me and I'm able to turn out a lot very quickly. Screwing down this backing board provides a lot of support. Then I started to make the face frame. No matter how many times I measure, I seem to always be off by a little bit. So to save me some stress, I get the measurements off the cabinets themselves. I find making a temporary jig helps prevent the pieces from moving all over the place when I'm screwing them down. I don't expect this to take too much abuse, so a little bit of glue, pressure, brad nails is enough to hold the face frame in place. I left this overnight to let the glue set up. So now I'm repeating the entire process to make wider, shorter cabinets. I always cut my pieces one inch longer than they need to be. Then I go back and make exact cuts. Assembly was pretty easy the second time around. As I'm installing the backing of the cabinet, I intentionally leave these open spaces so I could feed the wires accordingly. I'll eventually try to figure out a way to finish this so you don't see those wide openings. As you can see, the backing adds significant strength. As you can see, I'm amping up the effort. Unfortunately, I didn't amp down the effort when I moved over to the other cabinet. Sounds like my spine the last time I tried a deadlift. That gets redone. So the project was pretty repetitive. I built four cabinets, four face frames, sanded everything down, put it all together, and set it up overnight to cure. So then I created some cabinet bases with some 2x4s that I was able to turn out pretty quick. I was hoping not to cut into the baseboard of the wall itself in the event that I need to remove this. So all of this will be wrapped in baseboard trim at the end. In between the cabinets and under the eventual mantle, I decided to put a fireplace with the surround. I'm gonna set it up with wood at this time and then eventually install some marble or some sort of stone when I figure out what I'm gonna do for finishing work. I have no desire to burn down my house, so the fireplace won't even be plugged in until this is done. Now that I've done everything that my wife asked me not to do, it's time to start the mantle. I'm aiming for a two-tier mantle wrap wood trim. After doing some high-level astrophysics, I got my compound miter saw in the right position. Trim is a lot more expensive than pine, so I overcut everything and then came back to the saw to trim off the excess. I have tons of finishing work to do at the end, but I decided to get this into place using some super glue. It's really impressive how strong that super glue is. 
Laying the top right on top of the cabinet didn't look so good, so I added some spacers to raise the top, so this way you could see a little bit more of the face frame. As I was thinking about the design between the mantle and the actual cabinets I built, I needed something to help break up the flow to differentiate the two. It'd probably be easier to do this in CAD, but I don't really know how to use that, so this is what I came up with. With the quick measurement in hand, it was time to make the mantle. Using a combination of techniques from earlier, it was time to just jump into it. I started off with creating a short header, then cut the trim, did a quick test fit, then I mounted everything to the top shelf, making sure there was a one inch space between the trim and the edge of the shelf. With the TV being mounted to the wall, I don't anticipate any weight will actually be on this mantle, but I added some additional supports. I installed it to make sure everything looked alright and clearly it was a little higher than I wanted it to be, so the cabinet base had to go. I started cutting the trim that I was going to use to wrap the cabinet base with. Damn, that super glue is strong. So I put everything together and I wanted to make sure the electronics worked. Then after taking a closer look at it, something was off. The top was not proportional to the base. So I decided to rework it. So then I started to remove the trim from the shelf tops and decided to make it double thickness. As annoying as this is, if I'm gonna live with this for a long time, I better do it right. I then cut everything flush and added some edge banding. There's a ton of instructional content online on how to do this right, but the key thing is making sure everything is aligned as much as possible, making sure the edge banding is heated enough so it activates the glue without burning the wood, add even pressure, which I'm gonna do now, Carefully trim away excess. Using a knife, I left myself about one to three millimeters in excess. And then I went back to use this tool to cut off the remaining excess that brought it everything nice and straight. Once you get in a rhythm, it's pretty easy. Before I discovered this tool, I would use a razor blade, and the results weren't as consistent. If I left too much excess, my first pass would be shallow, and then my second pass would be nice and tight. Working on the lower tiers gave me a lot of confidence before I stepped up to the main mantle. Just took my time and was being as careful as possible. So I got it to a place where I feel comfortable leaving it till the summer to stain. Here are the thought processes behind some of my designs. Please leave any suggestions in the comments below and subscribe to let me know you like this kind of content. It really goes a long way.